Welcome, foolish mortals. Time to be turning around. If only you could. Cause this here's the wildest ride in the wilderness! Hey, Henry, what's holding you up? Let's get on with the show. We can't hang around here all day. Ladies and gents, this is the moment you've waited for. There's no turning back now. This is the greatest show! It's time for the WDW Beyond the Gates podcast with your hosts, Michael Hurley and Gary Aruda. That's right. This is the WDW Beyond the Gates podcast, episode number 537, recorded from the Defont Leroy Studios in Kent County, Rhode Island, in sunny southwest Florida. I'm your host, Gary, joined as always by my co host and my cousin, Mike, down in Florida. How are you doing today, Michael? Oh, I'm fabulous. Yeah, what's new in your neck of the woods? Uh, I don't know. Got a ball game on. I've this is the most of baseball game that I've watched this year. Yeah. More than me. We were just talking about that before we started recording. Yeah, it's garbage. Now this this episode is coming out while I'll be on vacation, correct? Is that yes. the timeline here? This is coming out like yeah, we had to we had to pre-record a couple weeks. Yeah. Pre-record. So you just got back from a little vacation, and you're gonna be also on vacation when this comes out, basically. Uh, well, I I don't. I'm going to He's on vacations. The, the first one was a vacation because that was for your anniversary, and then yes. the second one's a business trip. That's correct. Yep, we've yeah. got meetings up there. And are you excited about uh, staying at the boardwalk? I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I've never stayed in the DVC area. With the- with the refurbed rooms, I'm gonna. Yeah, check I'm looking it out. forward to it. Am I my welcome to come check out the room at some point? Oh no! Oh no! Doubt about it. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Now I talked about this in the uh, in the group chat, and I decided to go uh, upgrade from an Uber to a, a car service for this trip. Yeah, that's a good move, isn't it? Uh get, yeah, of course it is. Getting the black SUV, the guy with the tablet holding my name on it when I get to the airport. A lot of times, too, they'll have the tablet right in, like, in the window, in the front window. Oh, true. But there, he or he or she supposedly meets me at, like, baggage claim and helps with the bags and stuff. That's what, uh, that's what Angry New Phil Jr., my travel liaison. You're my travel professional, but he's that's my right. travel liaison. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, I mean, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. And this, the... Biggest selling point, I was like on the fence. I wasn't going to do it. And then this one particular one includes like a 20-minute public stop on the way. You need that, don't you? Just a couple cases of water, a couple cases of beer, some snacks. Yeah. That saves you hundreds of dollars. Hundreds of dollars. Fantastic parts. Fantastic. It It pays for the transportation. If I drink 20 Miller Lights that I buy at Publix, that would have cost me what two hundred dollars at Disney for those twenty Miller Lights? Easily, right? I'm not exaggerating. No, over a nine night stay. I mean, what I did have... this SUV end up one way cost you? Did you do it? Did you? Oh, I did what round did trip. Work. What's I did that? Round trip. Round yeah. trip. Do you save it all, or no? Is it the same way? You save like thirty bucks if you do a round trip. Oh, do you? Because when I did the yeah. car service uh, to and from LAX, it it didn't behoove me to to do to it. Yeah, it, so I just did two one ways. Yeah. It was small. So it was, uh, so I could have done the town car and it would have been around 200 bucks round trip. It was like 195 for the town car, but the SUV was like 270. So I was like, for an extra 80 bucks, you kind of need the SUV, don't you? I mean, that's how presidents get delivered to and from speeches parts. I mean, you, <laughs> you and I like balling, don't we? So the biggest, the real reason though, and the town car said you can only fit four pieces of luggage and four people. The SUV you can get up to six pieces of luggage and six people in it. So we're 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 traveling heavy. This is a nine night trip. We're gonna have a oh, lot yeah. of luggage with yeah. us. So I figured, you know, just to play it safe. And in the future, when you know you buy that second contract, and I you're gonna just... have the washer and dryer, you just go light, and that's another good selling point. You make that public stop. You're cooking in the 
Just look at how much money you're going to save just upgrade, just buying that second <laughs> yeah. contract. Yeah, because you know we'll be doing a lot of cooking there, Pards. Yeah, I'm still working. I was working in the pool today, not cleaning and scrubbing the tiles, but working on that second contract. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And uh, I said, you know, how, how great would it be if you're at the Grand Floridian at Christmas was specifically blocked out of the parks? You get the one bedroom, you put the Christmas tree up. We got the movie on the big screen TV. I'm cooking and she's making cookies. Make a cookie. You get like a, a small rib roast for yeah. the two of you or something. Yeah. Yep. Just season that boy, bad boy up, sear, sear it on all sides, and then put it in for a few hours. Yeah. Nice so, standing rib thing. roast. Yeah. You don't need a big one just for the two of you, like three pounds maybe. Do some mashed good. potatoes and some veggies and sit yeah. there. And of course. You sitting there at that at that beautiful dining room table at the Grand Floridian. You got like Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street with your Christmas yep. tree up. I mean, what? And then you could go stand out in the balcony and look at palm trees. It's perfect, isn't it? That's perfect. Yeah, I like that. That's the thing. I mean, I mean, Angry New Phil Junior told me last night when we went live. By the way, you can go check that out on our YouTube channel. We talked about our anger management mm -hmm. uh, issues, and we talked. I think. Basically about your second contract and what okay. my second contract would look like and what his third contract would look like. So, Oh, very nice. But he, he said once you go to that one bedroom, it's impossible to go back to a studio. Especially with the kids. Like for you and Susie, I can see you flip-flopping like, hey, we can get a good deal. Let's just go up for a couple nights. But when you're traveling on vacation and you have the two kids and you get a little bit of separation from them, I mean, that's how you're selling it. But even deep down, if you just came down, if you came down for a weekend, say Doc said, you know what? Not that the Grand Floridian's her spot, but she's like, you know what? How cool would it be to stay there in December? Yeah. For two nights and blah, blah. blah. And you went online. You said, oh, son of a bee. They got one in a few months. You want to go one bedroom too, don't you? That'd be nice. Just the two of us, you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that wouldn't be got bad. That king, got that king room. Oh, and they got, the, they got a walk in. That's the thing. The Closet. amenities are even a little bit nicer too. The bathroom's nicer. Yeah, they've got the whirlpool uh, tub. Yeah, you yeah. know, better shower. They've got a walk-in closet because you need a walk-in closet. You know, obviously, when you just put in one windbreaker and a golf <laughs> shirt for when you go to Narcoosies, you yeah, need. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing too. You sell it like you're gonna cook, and then you make a a citricose and a Narcoosie <laughs> reservation for the two nights you're there. <laughs> you know what though? Seriously though, wouldn't you rather cook if you were in a one bedroom? Yeah, I mean, it, just I makes could... it, it makes it different. It's just something that I've never done before, which would like having that gravy in the yeah. treehouse villas. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? That was awesome. Make like they made Chex Mix and they did the cookies and stuff. But also think about like I like making breakfast. And you're in the room, you start doing like some bacon and pancakes in the did morning. Did we do breakfast or no? No, because we were kind of we had plans in the mornings. Yeah, we did we, the brunch. We, we did we had the golf shirt thing in the morning. That's right. Yeah, we had golf and then we had brunch. So we didn't really do breakfast in the room. I think we got some pastries or something one morning, but yeah, over at the quick service, right? That's right. Yeah. Artist palette. They both they both want to stay at the, the kids both want to stay at the tree houses again. But I, I think if I get them in a one bedroom somewhere else, they have you hold on that. Have you show have you got them on board? Those you get the two little weasels who stop pestering the mom. They start walking around. They've got like the briefcase with all <laughs> with all of our Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> That's a good idea. I think I can get your Gina on board because she's like, I was looking at the website and she's like, "What are you looking at? More hotels?" I said, "Yep." She's like, "Oh, I like that. Where are we gonna stay?" I said, "Well, I'm thinking Animal Kingdom." Oh, I like Animal Kingdom. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> I think yeah, that's I think, the move, though. I know we don't want to get too off topic here, but you yeah, but are. I mean, we're talking. At least we're not talking golf, and we're talking that's DVC, true. Disney stuff. Yeah, but like we we were messaging before. I think the Animal Kingdom one's very appealing to me for those those two reasons we talked about: the value rooms that are hard to get, and the concierge rooms. Yeah, which are very hard to get. I'm yeah. not saying like it's still difficult even at the 11 month, but you at least have a chance at that point. Yeah, you do. Whereas if you're trying to get a seven, you got no shot at those rooms. Those are gone. Because if you're doing something like if I'm trying to help, like take somebody like, let's say Sarah's sister, when her kid gets a little older, they want to go down 
and like we're gonna go with them. Now you've we're been, looking have at. You been working, have you been working that angle too? The family? not yet, not yet. But then we do like a two bedroom. We can get the value two bedroom at Animal Kingdom for cheap points. Yeah, you know what I mean. Relatively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta. Yeah, I gotta start working the spreadsheets. So, yeah. So maybe here's the deal. Maybe we figure out this whole DVC thing first before I beat her down about about cruises about motion sickness yeah because i don't want to i don't want to put a sour taste in her mouth and then you have to deal with it for the next 10 days right exactly so how about if we just is that a deal we'll just get the second contract done and let's get that second contract signed. Sign off on that i'll just go down and beat her down is that fair let's let the ink dry and then the next time we're down you could beat beat her down on that okay yeah. that's fair yeah yeah that's a good idea well speaking of uh being in disney since this is a Disney podcast, this week we're going to talk about the top ways to stay cool at Walt Disney World in the summer. Because, as you know, all the weather terrorists are out. It's 105 degrees. It's a million Hold degrees. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Exit velocity, 106.1 mile an hour. The second thing is a launch. It's 31 degrees. Is that good or bad? I don't know. Distance, 412 feet. Well, that sounds good then. 412, 412 feet. Good. Yeah, I understand that. I'm, I, if this is the first time I've watched baseball. Red Sox are up 2 nothing on two solo home runs. The rest of the outs all came on the way of strikeouts. Another yeah, bond burner. Fantastic thing. Product to watch. What is 31 degrees? The angle. Yeah, that's a, is that what they call it now? So it, I remember so they used to call it launch angle. Yeah, if it was zero degrees, it would be like a... It would be flat. It would just be a P. Yeah. So 31 right. degrees. I don't even know what that means, though. I can't visualize 31 degrees. It's like like this big. Okay. Like, like this is the ground. 31 degrees is like that. 90 degrees is straight up. Yeah, 180, is... 180 is the other. Yeah, I mean, I got a D in geometry. All right, so you're is half... Is that you're... even geometry? Uh, yeah, that would be geometry, trigonometry. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't do trig, Podge. I didn't do... No, I went right I back. I did geometry that, yeah. and then yeah. went into algebra 3 my senior year. Yeah. I didn't I get didn't... into all that calculus nonsense i didn't even take math my senior year in high school i bagged out on that anyways i should i'm sorry to interrupt you i just i, I didn't know what this was i'm I'm confused i just knew run runs hits, now, and errors do you remember back. like last week when you said you were not going to watch anything and you're going to get rid of like all the distractions and not be ocd that lasted one week <laughs> that was a one week resolution all right wasn't all right it? all right all right it's I'm not, you know, the volume's down. It's the eighth inning. Let me just keep it on. All right. I'm sorry, parts. They're only four. I think they're only like four or five out in the loss column. So, um, I don't even know what I was going to say. Oh, we're talking about the top ways to stay cool at Walt Disney World. And we all know the weather terrorists are out in full force because, as you may have heard, it's, it's hot this summer in Florida. It, it it can it can get it can get a little hot in central Florida specifically in the summer. No, but yeah. this summer's, especially hot apparently from what people have been saying it has it has been actually warm it was 96 okay. today when i was in the pool so i looked at 7 30 tonight at my weather app and it was still 97 degrees at walt disney world that's was that a feel like tonight. feel like was 102 okay that's according to the the weather app weather bug the app i use um however it's always hot down there yeah, of course it is. But it's oppressive in the summer. It's definitely, you got to plan around it. You got to be ready for it. So we decided it would be a good idea to talk about what are some of the best ways to stay cool or to cool off while you're at Walt Disney World. So I came up with a few. You came okay. up with a few. I came and, up with a uh, few, yep. Let's see what let's see what we have. I tried to think a little outside the box on some of them. And then some are the more common, obvious ones. So I'm going to start with the, I'm going to start with one that, I'm guessing is not going to be on your list, but we'll find out. And I'm saying that if you're hot and you're taking a little break, why don't you go to the uh, one of the arcades at the resort? It's great with the kids. Throw 20 bucks on one of those cards and uh, cool off for a few minutes in the arcade with the nice air conditioning. Can't really go wrong with that. No, you really can't. There's lots of arcades. Every resort has one. Some are very small. Like the one yep. at Boardwalk is lousy. It's tiny. Um, right yeah it's over by the pool if i recall yeah it is it's right across from the bathrooms at the pool um but some of the resorts have really nice arcades big arcades like pop centuries arcade is huge 
I'd have to go and say that the values and then working your way over to the moderates and the deluxes. I agree. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The deluxes don't have the best arcades. Although the one at Saratoga wasn't bad. It's like Yacht and Beach is nice too. That's right. Yep. Yacht and Beach is really nice. So use the arcades, hang out in the AC, keep the kids occupied, play some ski ball, some uh some air hockey, good stuff like that. Good way to cool off for a few minutes. Was that uh, did that make your list? It did not make my list. Okay. What what is on your list here, parts? So Susie Susie came up with one that was very interesting. So this okay. is just if you're going to the parks and you're going to be there not necessarily all day, but for a majority of the day. But while just, you're at the parks, how while cool you're at up. the parks yeah. is to stagger the attraction. So if you're in Adventureland and you're going to do the treehouse mm-hmm. and then you're going to jump on and go do like Aladdin's carpets or something. Aladdin's carpets or you're going to go do oh Jungle Cruise even. Those are a jungle all cruise, a jungle cruise, which yeah. can cool cool you off a little bit. Maybe after two attractions, go do the uh, Country Bear Jamboree or Tiki Room, yeah, or the Tiki Room, or you know they're both nearby. But go do an air conditioned attraction. That's a good. That's like actually Har Har Magic, and yeah, that's really a good point because there are you if you don't plan it well, you could do multiple attractions in a row where you're waiting outside or the attractions yep. outside. So like if you do the treehouse and then Aladdin's carpets and then Jungle Cruise, those are all outside. There's no air conditioning in any of those three. So maybe you want to do one outdoor, one AC. Like even pirates, at least the at least it's indoors. At least a queue, yeah. Even the queue's indoor. So you cool off a little while you're waiting, the ride's right. nice and cool, and then you come back out and then you go over and do the jungle cruise where you're gonna be waiting outside. Gives you a break in between. And at least even jungle cruise, you're you're sheltered from the sun a little bit yeah. it's shaded and they, but you're still outdoors and, it's and they hot. have those fans but it, yeah correct but that the ride gets hot though jungle cruise in the middle of the day oh sure and out on the ride that gets pretty warm yeah there's there's plenty of uh indoor attractions and like you said you could do any of the shows hall of presidents tiki room uh, country bear when that's open again which will be soon actually this week as the uh show comes out um, I actually had that on my list. I had Hall of Presidents and like those types of shows. In Absolutely. So it's kind of the same, same, uh, same thing you were thinking of. Um, now this is one. I have a couple specific in mind, but uh, it's hot out. You're hanging out at the pool. Obviously, you can jump in the pool and cool off. But if you're sitting on the on the lounge chair and you're feeling a little warm, a lot of the pool bars have nice big fans and they're shaded like yeah. uh the one at um port orleans riverside muddy waters like that's a great pool bar it's probably 20 degrees cooler when you go underneath that in that shade where all the fans are and you sit down belly up to the bar have a cocktail or a beer and just cool off for 10 15 20 minutes whatever it takes and then go back out to your lounger in the sun so that's one. It you know it's all different scenarios. Depends on where you're hot, where you're coming from, where you're going. But if you're at the pool and you don't want to hop in the water, you know, go over to the bar and hang out there for a while. A lot of some of them are pretty out in the open, but a lot of them mm-hmm. are uh, more enclosed and shadier, um, and they're good spots to kind of hang out and cool off for a little bit. And that's one. By I think that's one of the best pool bars on property at uh, Riverside. Yes. Yeah, that one's great. People talk about Hurricane Hannah's a lot, but that's just because it's at a great pool. It's at a great pool. I mean, you're pretty much out in the limited seating, and you're out. You're outside. Yeah. Same thing with the one at the Grand Floridian. They're all set up the same. It seems like for as far as the uh, the deluxe outdoor bars are concerned, or pool bars are concerned. Yeah, they're more like set up the same way. Good food, Mm -hmm. but um, you're basically just going to be sitting on a bar stool outside. Yeah, pretty much. And even like the the one at Riverside is technically outside, but it's big and it's completely mm-hmm. covered and like it's completely covered, right? Away from everything else. What else did you have on your list, parts? So this is something that I wear on the golf course. I wear those big brim hats. Okay. I think you have to keep the melon protected. Oh yeah. And and especially I wear the other thing. Have you ever seen those cool things? You put them in water and you just kind of wring them. 
the cooling towels. Yeah, it's like a cool. Yeah, it cools your neck off. So you throw one of those bad boys on, but just make sure you have one of those big brim hats. It's going to keep a lot of it off your neck and your ears, and because yeah. that's what that's what overheats. You can drink as much water as you want, but yeah, you got to like, keep that that beaten sun down off you. Yeah, because like you're wearing a visor right now. I wouldn't. I wouldn't really suggest wearing a visor in the parks when it's super hot. Correct. Cover the top of your melon at least. Yes. The big, the bigger the hat, the better is what you're saying. But even a, even a baseball hat doesn't do you anything. No, but it's it's still better. Like I would suggest wearing a hat over a knot for sure. Yes. But yeah, I see what you're saying. Those cooling towels are great too. I didn't put. They that really on my are, list, but they work really well. And you know, at Disney, you can find a a water fountain, or as we call it, a bubbler pretty much anywhere like the water is usually not great out of those things to drink yeah because it's not it's usually not super cold yeah and it's and it tastes it like the chlorine pool the right? chlorine taste but to just run your cooling towel under it you don't need extremely cold water to get those things to work really no well. you really don't now that you mentioned i actually uh i think i forgot to pack those so i'm gonna have to go search for those and throw them in my bag last minute here because i do have some and they're great Otherwise, I'm going to end up buying the $25 ones that have little Mickey Mouses on them down there. That's a good one. The big hat and the cooling towel. I like Do you that. have a big nerdy hat? I don't. I, yeah, oh, I shouldn't you... say that. I have a big straw hat that I use when I cut the grass. You bringing that down? Tell me. You no. Got it. Come on, bro. It's, it's not in the luggage. The problem is, like, all that's, like, it's great. I like what you're saying. But that stuff doesn't, like. You can't wear them on rides and like you bump into stuff with them. Like, nah, the I, one that I have, I got a pool hat. I need and first of all, you can take it out and just fold it up. Ooh, fold it up and just you could put it in your pocket or you could put it in your backpack. I need one like that. And then it has the other thing where you just, and then it just stays. Oh, zip it so it doesn't fly off. Yeah, so it can stay connected to your neck. I need to be nerdier. I need to get the nerdier hats. I think that's the problem between you and I. I mean, this is you're trying so hard for that look. Where I just realized years ago I'm never gonna pull it off. So I'm not trying for you any can nerd kind of up as I can nerd up as much as yeah. I want. I'm not trying for a look. I just don't they're usually not super comfortable. I do have one that's in my golf bag that I never wear because it's slightly too tight because I have a big head, a big fat melon. Um, so speaking of being in the parks and feeling like the sun's beating down on you, like just pop in to a gift shop, 20 minutes, just take advantage of those, those spots that you know are going to have great air conditioning. There's certain ones that, you know, have like better air conditioning. No doubt. Than others. There's certain gift shops, like a lot of the ones in animal kingdom, they have like open doors and they're not as cool in there. Right, but like the one in Epcot when you like all the doors are closed off. Like, what's that one called now? It used to be uh, Mouse Gears. It used to be Mouse Gears. Now it's like I forget what it's called now. But that one's usually pretty cool. The Emporiums usually, if it's not too crowded, you can usually cool off pretty good in the Emporium. Right. Um, I noticed like, and I think it's because of the the chocolates. The candy shops are always very cool. Because they don't want like they probably don't want the chocolates to get like weepy and melty. Those ones seem like they're always air conditioned a little strong. And even if it's air conditioned a little, you throw me in there after a day of eating, <laughs> all bets are off, aren't they, parts? And people be clearing out. They don't care how cool it is in there. What was that? Was Christopher Cross just join us? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody must have hit the wrong button. Christopher Cross <laughs> had to chime in on that one. Why is he in here? Who knows? Oh my goodness! That's ridiculous. <laughs> But sometimes you just like you're walking around and you just need a break for a minute and you'll just hop into the into the gift shop and like or the Mexico Pavilion, which and just walk around those shops in there and just try to steal some AC. I think that's the biggest the biggest thing is like just steal that AC when you can take advantage of it. Recharge a little bit. Can I one up you on this? Absolutely. Go for it. Everyone needs a direct contract so that they can get into that DVC lounge. And oh, there's they, more being built now. They're going to have them at all the parks now, parts. Even more incentive. More incentive. There you go. Go buy that, that old Key West Direct at 175 instead of on the <laughs> resale market for 82 Yeah. Is that uh, is that AC pretty good in that DVC it's lounge? Pretty good. It's pretty yeah. good, yeah. It's good, DC. Yeah. That's nice. 
That's a you get good your one. water. You get your bag of chips, some mm. cookies. There you go. Oreos. You never know what they're gonna have up there. There's always some pretzels, things like some that, goodies. Yeah. yeah. Can you be a weasel and like stuff them in your backpack and take? Them oh, back you see that? They ask you to limit it, but you'll see Do like they? these schmucks pulling them out of their backpack. Yep. <laughs> I, I was wondering. Oh, well, you I know paid, it. I paid a lot of money I for this contract. For this. I paid a lot of money for this. Yeah. People who steal those cheap white towels that I wouldn't even blow my nose on. <laughs> yeah, the towels from the pool. They feel that like you need seven paper. of them. Yeah, exactly. I usually take four or five. Like you need four or five, and, and three to dry off with. You imagine stealing those things? I, yeah, like unless you're washing your car with it or something, they're useless. <laughs> like you try to dry Rody off with that thing, you'll be like, "What the heck?" Yeah, or this isn't gonna work for me. <laughs> this is garbage. And it's fine. I think they should use crappy towels at the pool so people don't steal so people them, but people don't. still steal them. Yeah. People still steal them, but if they had like those really nice towels that you wrapped around and you would dry within five minutes, those yeah. things are gone. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I can't even fit that one of those around my leg. It's so like, bad, isn't it? Forget like if you put body. it on the chase lounge, like if you want to use it as a pillow, you need about 16 of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, that's funny. That's a good one. So the DV so exclusive lounges are good ways. Yeah. To yeah. So would you say like the AC and like Club 33 would be even better? Pro- probably. It's going to feel a lot better, don't you think? I would imagine so. Yeah. The Club 33 AC is probably at like 58. You go in there, your your hair is like combed as soon as you go in. What do we like? Go, we, it's we like going into in a there. country club bathroom and they have the combs in the barbersaw, barbicide, and you can like, those things are so cheesy, aren't they? Oh, yeah. I always use those at Sarah Bay. I don't. I've never used a comb except for there. I like take one of those out and I like. Do you just oh. feel fa- do you as Tom Morrow was hey, fancy? It was fancy. I feel like you have to use it, right? That's what they're there for. I got to get him on the sound bar, don't I? <laughs> just a fancy. <laughs> Ooh, doorbell. <laughs> we talked about that in the pool. <laughs> uh, my next one <laughs> for cooling off. Oh, it's got a doorbell. Uh, Get some ice cream parts. I love ice cream. Can't go wrong with that. Hang out at the plaza for a minute. Get some ice cream there. A Dole Whip, a citrus swirl. Find a little shady spot and, and kind of recharge a little bit with that. I think that's a great way to cool off. Sometimes you got to eat them quick, though. They melt. I would definitely uh, recommend. But you're an one... ice cream guy. Can you kill it I really it. quickly? I can, but with the kids, like they want those Mickey ice cream bars, and those things turn into a disaster. In the oh, summer. I'm sure they do, because they're just they got that like hard chocolate, and then the vanilla starts melting, and it's running down their arm. Like they got streaks of like chocolate vanilla to their elbow, but they love it. And that's but a even... difficult cleanup, isn't it? Yeah, that's when you're like, all right, we're going on uh, Kali River Rapids, and keep your arms up, and hopefully it washes off. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean they're a pain. I like the stuff in the cups because at least if it melts, it's still contained like a Dole Whip in a in a bowl. Worst case, it's just soupy at the bottom. You just drink it at the end, you know. But yeah, those the ones on the sticks are tough. They're hard to eat quick enough, especially they really are. are. Yeah, but we got a Dole. Really Susie got a Dole Whip, and and uh, I mean, again, like within three or four minutes, it was just turning right into. Into soup, right? A lemonade, yeah. It look just looked like lemonade. Still good though. It still stays nice and cool. Even when it like melts, it's not like it gets warm. It'll still cool you off. What do you have for the next one? I know you're not an ice cream guy, so I don't think you had that on your list. How about just keep it simple and go in the damn pool? Yeah. No, that was on mine. Yeah, take a break, go to the pool. You know what's tough though? What? Not, uh, I shouldn't say tough, but like the pool will cool you off. But like when you get out, if you're not putting on sunscreen, like you get burned and then you feel like worse. Like sometimes I feel like if you're not careful enough with the pools, yeah, and like wearing a sun shirt or keeping the sunscreen applied, like you can feel hotter after you're done with the pool than before. Like it beats down on you. True that. But, like, for a quick dip or at night, like, at the end of the day, you are hot all day and you go yeah. in after sunset, like, it just, like, cools you to the core. It's so refreshing, isn't it? It is very refreshing. I actually prefer the after-dinner swim 
Yeah. I know like everyone says like go in the middle of the day and it makes sense because that's the hottest part of the day. You want to take a break, get out of the parks. And I do agree with that. But those nights when you go and you stay in the pool till nine or 10 o'clock, you just feel so good. Like walking back, you get inside, you're still a little wet. And then the AC hits you and you're like, actually, like shivering. Like it's you like notice too that smell. There's something different about the AC smell after you've come out of a pool. I notice it in the house. Okay. It smells like a Disney resort. I don't know if it if it's just that combination of the chlorine or what. Oh, it must be, yeah. But every time I open that glass side door and I'm like, God, I feel like I'm at a Disney resort. You just have that smell. Mm. See if you notice it th- the next week. I'll pay attention, yeah. Or last week. See if yeah, you well, notice it two right weeks now. ago. I don't even know what day it is right now. Yeah. No, pool makes sense. I uh, I said water park. Like, just go to the water. But again, that's like. Those places are hot unless you're actively like in the splash pool or something waiting in line for the slides feels like the seventh circle of hell. There, well, you know, in those places. you know, what we talked about because we got a cabana in Vero Beach mm. and they don't have them like they do at the at the parks. We at, at the pools. We just got one um, on the beach. I took a picture okay. of it. It's just got yeah, some yeah. padded chase lounges. I said, you know, it'd be nice is to get the cabanas at the water park. Because they're a lot cheaper oh. than they are at the Grand Floridian and at the Beach Club. It's interesting. That's balling, is it not? Because like you said, it can get hot. So you go on that, you go on the Lazy River, and then you're like, you know what? I'm going to go read a magazine and hang out in my yeah. close my eyes for a half yeah, If you're going to be there all day, sure. But the thing is, like, if you have an annual pass with that water park option, or yeah. let's say... Uh, in 2025, the first day of your stay, you get you can go to a water park for free. It's included. Yeah, correct. And you just do that. Just go for a couple hours. You don't have to be absolutely. There all day. Then you don't feel like you're obligated because you didn't pay 85 dollars out of pocket. Absolutely. Right. You go for you go for an hour, hour and a half. Go in the lazy river. Pick one slide that you want to do, and get back on the bus and go back to your resort or drive if you if you have a car. I think that's a great one. What else do you have? Do you have anything else on your list? I only have a couple more. I mean, I basically like essentially just say stup, just stupor, super hydrated. Start yeah. early in the morning. I, you know, I bring Gatorade up, or we bought the um oh, the, the powder liquid IV you that you time, just right? mix with water. How's that stuff work? The liquid IV. Is oh, it's good? it's good. It's just super. It's super easy. You just mix it with water. Is it better than Gatorade? I like Gatorade better. I like the taste of the lemon lime and yeah. the uh, fruit punch. That's but, a good uh, play. I might actually do like. Uh, do yeah, I mean you're you gonna you you can do the power aids. I mean with your refillable mug. Well, that's true. But I might if I'm gonna buy if I'm gonna have that public stop, I might buy like a powdered Gatorade. Yeah, get the powdered Gatorade. Seriously, it's then it's, I could just add a little bit into the bottles of water, shake it up, and like no doubt, yeah, drink that thing. Yeah, yeah. that's a good because point. you know we we bring our bottles every time we go on vacation, and you get up and you yeah I'm gonna have, have twenty ounces of water, then you drink the coffee, and right. then you go to the park, and then you come back, and then you go to the pool, and you forgot your mug, and then the next thing you know, you've only had like thirty ounces of water when you need to have a hundred and whatever based on your. Especially if you're sweating all day and outside right. in the heat, yeah. Right. So and start then, early, start yeah. early, and just hydrate, hydrate. Because Especially there's nothing if you're worse drinking. than being dehydrated yeah. and, and being overheated. Especially if you're drinking in the parks, like, you should have a water in between every drink. Absolutely. Like, if you're at Epcot and you're doing the drinking around the world, like, when it's hot, that's already a, a battle to have that many drinks, but... You got to do at least one water for every drink because otherwise you're going to be, you literally might just like pass out from dehydration because that stuff will destroy you doing it that way. Yeah. That's one thing. Like anytime, like if I drink during the day at Disney, I'm always drinking a wall, at least one water in between drinks. I mean, I've to go to the bathroom a hundred times, but I'd rather do that than. Oh yeah, dehydrated. You know, yeah, that's a good one. So the last one I have, yeah, let me hear it. I think this one's maybe the most outside the box one that I can come up with. Oh, I'm gonna say one of the best ways to stay cool or to recharge or whatever you want to say is park hop. I know you hate the buses, but I think they have some of the best air conditioning. Oh, they do. They anywhere. do. You're cold when you get, especially because you're getting on and you've been sweating. 
Yes. There's nothing worse than having your shirt full of sweat and then jumping into that AC. Yeah, exactly. But it cools you right down. You yeah, it does. Shivering. So if you're at Animal Kingdom and you and you just hop over to Epcot, get on one of those buses, you'll be nice. And, and you're cool going to be on that bus for two and a half hours. Maybe three, depending on traffic. Yeah, I know that Animal Kingdom's in a different state than the rest of the park. So right. It's really important to, yeah. But I know you've you've said recently you just are very down on the bus transportation. You just hate yeah, it. Yeah. But, but the AC is is phenomenal on the buses. I agree. And what a great way to cool it. If you're going to be park hopping anyway, like time it where it's like, all right, it's getting hot. Let's take a break. We'll get on one of these buses for 20 minutes and, and we'll be ready to rock when we get to the next park. Have some waters while you're waiting. Good to go. Well, depending on where you're going to go, you could take a bus over to one of those Skyliner resorts. True. Yeah. Because the you Skyline. Magic Kingdom to Riviera to Primo Piatto. That's a good point. And yeah. Jump on the quick Skyline and go do the back of Epcot and then call it a day. Yeah, absolutely. I like, I actually like that play a lot. When we stayed at, uh... where were we? I forget which one. Animal Kingdom a couple of years ago. Oh, that's when you guys went over to Riviera and just kind of walked. You checked yeah, out and you had time to kill, right? Right. We just took a bus to Hollywood Studios just so we could get on the Skyliner. Oh, either. that's right. Because the kids had never, and Doc hadn't been on the Skyliner either, right. right? They wanted to do it. And I'm like, all right, we'll just do that. We'll go, we'll get lunch and then we'll go play mini golf. We'll just take the Skyliner around. And it's just, it's so much easier doing it that way. And it's more like, it's more fun. The back entrance of Epcot's usually easier to get in and out of. So if you want to plan it around that way. <clears throat> and you know what? The Skyliner cools you off a little bit. It really even does. on the hot days. Like that airflow really is pretty we're good. There, la, we're, there, we're at Riviera pretty much the same time. Fourth of July for our yeah, anniversary last weekend. Year, right. And it was hot. It was hot. And when we took the Skyliner, you get that breeze. You get up in the air and you get that cross breeze and you don't feel it anymore. Right. Cools you down pretty quick. It's nice. But yeah, I, that was really, that's the last one I had. Do you have any more on your list? I do not. No. I mean, obviously, a combination of all those things is ideal, like drinking water, wearing the right clothes to stay cool. You know, even sunscreen, as, as stupid as it sounds, like nothing worse than like, I hate wearing sunscreen. I always feel crappy when I put it on and then like I also it... don't know if it works and I'm not going to be a conspiracy theorist, but I've seen people down here when I worked at the golf course yeah. and they would put SPF 200 on <laughs> and they would cake that stuff. They wouldn't even rub it. They just yeah. I mean, it it looked like they put cheesecake on their foreheads. <laughs> and they're coming off the golf cart and I I just looked at them and shook my head. They're like, "Is it bad?" I'm like, "I don't just don't look in the mirror because as soon as you look, it's going to hurt worse than it actually does. Well, the thing is with sunscreen and you who knows if you're right or not, I'm not going to say I don't know about conspiracy theories, but if you don't reapply it, it's useless. Like right. putting it on once and then going out on the golf course for six hours. And then you're supposed to put it on, you know, 20 minutes prior to going into a pool. And what do people do? Right. They cake it on in and their hotel right room in. and they jump into the pool. So, yeah, exactly. But yeah, I, yeah mean, I think most of it's user error, and I think it does more good than it does bad. But like I said, then, I've seen people put that stuff on, and they are toast. Oh, yeah. But what I'm saying is if you get sunburn on one of your first few days on vacation, All games over. oh, it feels so bad every day. All games over, especially when you get it on the top of the feet. That's what when we went to the beach, mm. and I got a good base because I live down here. So I'm not out in the sun 24 7, but just that half hour dog walk just gives you a little bit. Yeah. And she told me she said just put some just put some on your feet. I said all right, yeah. and I put some on my feet, and you know we had that cabana, so it, it it hung over. So for the you know I just got a little bit of sun on my legs. Toward the end of the day, I looked and portion of my foot was red. Yeah, and I just prayed to God because you know how two hours later you could be really hosed. Oh yeah. And we got back to the room and I took a shower and the water hitting it didn't bother and I looked and it wasn't that bright red. It was just. A, a, bit, a small yeah. shade of red, so it was totally fine. But I'm like, you know, you put sandals on, you put sneak. It doesn't matter what you put on, it's going to hit that area, isn't it? As yeah. soon as you tie your sneak, you're like, Ooh. well, that's what I feel the most is on my feet because I don't yeah. wear. I because your feet are whiter than your your orifice, yeah. probably. 
Yeah, for me. I mean, so I like, don't know what you're, you know, what you do in the backyard as far as sunbathing goes, but not I'm much. Assuming, yeah. <laughs> but even like walking like from the hotel to the pool with my flip flops on, I could feel just on my feet, like yeah. the sun just like pounding. I'm like, oh man. Yep. Like I yeah, I always reapply to the feet. Like you're that's a good point. But if you get like a sunburn on the back of your neck, and then yep. every time the sun hits you there, it just feels like 190 degrees on it the really body. does. Cause that's when you know that's when you know is when your body doesn't bother you or your shoulder. Yeah. And you're walking back to the room and you still have your shirt off or whatever. And you're like, oh, my shoulder's hurt. And you kind of like, look, oh, no. Oh, no. You do the finger. Yeah. You know, you do the three-second finger and you take it in the, oh, I'm screwed. Yeah. No, that's not good. Sunscreen. I feel like it's important to to prevent that as, as much as possible. No, I do. I will do the, 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 the beach shirt. Do you... Uh, do you have one of those? To oh, beat I have shirt? several. I bought. Dude. I went to LL Bean and bought a few the other okay. day. Okay, because I have my Typhoon Lagoon. I've got three or four. Kristen's looking for one because I think they're comfortable to begin with. Yeah, I have two. I have two long sleeve ones and two short sleeve ones that I have, so I can wear those to the to when we go to the pool, and I'll just keep them on because you know my forearms can handle it because they're always exposed. But yeah, my chest and my back, I don't. I don't have a shirt off very often, so. Yeah, that's the thing, because, I mean, even if, if you have a pool, at least you're going to get exposed. But when you're, right. for, like, you, you northern people, I mean, you, you're not out and about as yeah. much. With you need that base. With your shirt off, yeah. It's you need so that base. It's impossible to get the base. Yeah. And then if you do, it's gone to, It's gone in the winter, and then you got to start start over. Start fresh, exactly. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to wear the shirts at the pool. I don't care. I think that's the way to go. And you actually stay a little cooler because it stays wet. Yeah, it does. It really does. And I like it. It can it, it dries in a consistent fashion other than yeah. like if you wear a regular cotton shirt into the pool. It just. I know what you're saying. Yeah. The only thing I don't. I just hate how it like clings to you. It does. And you got the only thing I don't like. Yeah. yeah. But it's worth it for that. Yeah, definitely. Those uh, those sun shirts. Are- I wish you could get them looser because no matter what size you get, they're always tight. Have you ever noticed that? That's probably what they are and what they they're they're need to do to be a little bit like that yeah yeah i have noticed but you'll see them we'll be hanging out and you'll you'll see my uh my sun shirts no anything else fig- oh, sorry. we got to figure out how you're going to get me speaking about cooling off in pools how you're going to get me in there <clears throat> i don't know like do i have to bring multiple magic bands and you could just tap in yeah, because they give you pretty much wristbands. I don't know if you could put do me they, on your reservation. I don't know. Do they know if you've already tapped into the pool? Like, because you don't tap out, right? Yeah, that's true. That's a good but point. If, you could go but, in and then. But get if they your say wristband. they've already given you the wristband that day, then they might not give you another one. Because I, I really don't care. I mean, I'm. I heard Boardwalk has a great pool. I've seen it. I've just never been in it. Well, we might come hang and out. I mean, you guys can come down and check it out. We could, you know, we could pool yeah. hop with each other. Sure. No, I mean, pool hopping been... against the rules. What's that? Pool hopping is expressly oh, against the rules. Yeah, but I think you can bring guests. I understand what you're saying, but like, I'm, no, no, I'm no. pretty sure at, I can bring you. At Boardwalk, I think. At Beach Club, they're definitely strict about it. Obviously, they check the wristbands and stuff. Yeah, no doubt. We'll figure something out. But anyway, anything else you want to add here for? Uh, for I got nothing week? else. All right. Well, you know where to find us. Go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at WDWBTG. You can check out uh, room reviews, restaurant reviews, transportation, all sorts of good stuff on our YouTube page. Climbing close to what? Almost 400 subscribers over there now? Yeah. Chipping away. That's pretty good. Yeah. We're getting there. So check us out there. Um, you can go to. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at WDWBTG. Our Facebook group is WDW Beyond the Gates Podcast Family. Join us over there as well. Our website, WDWBTG.com. You can email the show, Mike, or I should say info at WDWBTG.com, Mike at WDWBTG.com, and Gary at WDWBTG.com. Subscribe wherever you download podcasts. We do appreciate that. Leave us reviews. Leave us comments on YouTube. All that good stuff. It does help us out. Is there anything I uh, forgot to mention? No, you hit on everything. 
All right, that's going to do it for episode number 537 of the WDW Beyond the Gates podcast. For my co-host, Mike, my name is Gary. Thanks so much for listening. We'll talk to you again next week. Now it's time to say goodbye to all our company. M-I-C. See you real soon. K-E-Y. Why? Because we like you. M-O-R.